Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, are you ready for God's word? Are you ready to be blessed? Are you ready to be inspired? Praise God. Let's call for that daily bread before we go into the broadcast. Say this with me, say, Father, and listen, mean it with all of your heart. Because is this true? Say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. I have daily bread to receive from you and I receive all of it right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Listen, something good is coming your way today. You will hear good news today. Favor is coming to you today. Why? Because God loves you. And there is no limit. I told you yesterday, take off every limit from your mind where God is concerned. You remember the children of Israel walking in that, you remember the children of, uh, the disciples of Jesus, they were in that boat and Jesus was walking on the sea. And when they saw him, they thought it was a ghost because they've heard stories about ghosts, praise God. So he said, hey, be not afraid, it is I. And Peter spoke up and said, if you are the one, ask me to come on the water. Now I wonder what the other disciples thought. Peter, Peter, what's the meaning of that? But what did Jesus say? Jesus didn't say, Peter, when last did you fast and pray? Pete, Jesus didn't say, Peter, did you, did you pray this morning for one hour? No. He said, if you are the one who asked me to come. Now, these were people who were terrified just a few seconds ago. And even that question must have come from the place of trying to be sure. And all Jesus said to Peter was, what? Come. And the Bible said, Peter stepped out of that boat and began to walk on the water. He walked on the water and got so close to Jesus. And the moment he took his mind of Jesus and put his mind on the power of the sea, guess what happened? He began to sink. He wasn't walking because the sea changed. Are you hearing me? No, he wasn't walking on the water because the sea changed. No, he was walking on the water because the power in that word that was given to him was keeping his legs on top of the water. You see that now? So that's what we do sometimes. We, we, we are waiting for, we pray, and then we're waiting for everything to be all right before we take our move, before we take our, uh, uh, our steps in the direction we ought to go. No, not all the time. You see, because when you have prayed, it is the power of the word that have come to you that you are going to walk on, not the ability of the situation around you. So even though the storm was there, yes, but Peter was walking on the power of the word that was given to him. And, and when Jesus caught him, because he cried out, when the Bible said Jesus stretched his hands and caught him, and what did Jesus say? He didn't say, oh, the wave, don't mind those waves. No, he said, why did you doubt? Hey, so that means the wave was not the problem. The word has been given. All that was needed is keep believing. Keep believing. You remember the, 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 the man that sent, that came to Jesus to heal his daughter. And he was able to get the attention of Jesus. And Jesus said, okay, no problem. I'll come, I'll go heal your daughter. And then you know the story. As they were going, the woman with the issue of blood stopped and touched Jesus. And, and Jesus felt something had left him. And he, he, he stopped and dealt with that woman's issue. And when he was done, while he was rounding off with the woman, he overheard when the messengers came to the man. Because he had told them he's going to meet Jesus. So immediately after he left, sometime later, the daughter died. And so they, they came to meet him to tell him before he would come and disgrace himself, you know, coming with Jesus. So they ran to meet him and said, Sir, um, it's too late already. Your daughter is already dead. And thank God Jesus overheard it. And when Jesus overheard it, I'm sure the man would have just sneaked, you know, he would have just 
you know, played around, played around and just disappeared. Because you don't want to trouble Jesus anymore. See that? Because that's what they told him. Your daughter is already there. Don't trouble the master again. But then God, Jesus overheard them. And Jesus turned to him and says, Fear not. Keep believing. Fear not. Keep believing. Thank God Jesus caught him at the right spot. Because you see, his fear would have driven him to do something that would have kept his daughter dead. So the problem was not that the daughter was sick and she died. That wasn't the issue. The issue was, hey, keep believing. Keep believing. Peter, when Peter began to notice, when, you see, when he was taking his mind off of the words of Jesus and turning it over to the wind, and the waves. That was the moment he would have said, Master, help me. Not when he began to sink. And Jesus would have told him, Peter, look at me. And he would have looked at Jesus and continued walking on the water. But sometimes we shout when it's already too late. But thank God Jesus was still able to help him. But you see, learn to keep your faith on Jesus. Learn to keep your faith on Jesus. So you see, if you don't understand what God is doing in your life, I've shared all the stories for you to understand the power of the God that I've called you. He can do anything. I mean, anything. And He loves you enough. But the problem most times is the limit that you placed in your mind. So God got to, got to that point with the children of Israel where he said, you know what, you guys, you will not enter into my rest. So they entered into the physical promised land, but they did not enter into God's rest. Now, what do you mean God's rest? The system by which that land was supposed to function, they couldn't walk into it. So the land became just like any other land. It was blessed, it had its goodies, physically but beyond the physical goodies of the land there was a systematic systematic operation that god had ordained for their nation to operate by i'm telling you the truth god was trying to raise them up to believe ah, you know you know <laughs> i'll share with someone and, and and this is the truth God was, was training them in such a way that, I mean, imagine a, 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 a Hebrew man in his house and then his friend, his old time friend from Egypt, you know, comes to visit him. And then just suddenly like that without informing them, because, you know, then there was no GSM phone. So, I mean, if you want to send a message across to someone that you're coming to visit, oh dear Lord. <laughs> so so you, you just show up. Hey, I was passing by. Oh, oh I, I came all the way to look for you. And imagine your friends come and then there's no food in the house. And God was trying to train them to that point where like, um, let me serve you some food. Your wife now say, ah, honey, there's no food. We've not gotten anything yet. Ah, what do we do? Okay. Um, you know what? Um, set the table. You understand what I'm talking about? Set the table. And your wife will get into the kitchen and then and there will be food there and then bring and set. He said, oh, want to drink, want to drink. Just take some bottle and just heat it on the wall. <laughs> and drinks will be, will be there. I'm telling you, that is, so, so what kind of life is that? Oh, you don't know. You, you, you don't understand God. That's what God was preparing them for. That's why you see these things happen in scripture several. Elisha one time was with the sons of the prophet and there was no food in the house. And while they were thinking of what to eat, someone brought his first fruit. A few loaves of bread. And Elisha said, serve it before the people. 400 men. The servant said, sir, this is nonsense. How do we serve this? He said, serve it. I'm saying to you now, they will eat it, they will be full and it will remain. And that's exactly what happened. Jesus with the 5,000 crowd and the 4,000 crowd, he said, look, let's feed these people. How are we going to feed them? Relax. 
Tell them to sit down. What do we have? Five loaves and two fishes. Serve it before them. And they ate, they were full, 12 baskets remained. Twice there was leftover. That is the manner that land was supposed to operate. That is the manner they are supposed to operate in that land. Brothers and sisters, do you know the truth? God said to us, you know, in Hebrews, he says, this thing, ah, let me, let, let's go there. Oh, Rabbeke Nazata Katayaga Baba. Hebrews chapter 4 from verse 1. Hebrews chapter 4 from verse 1. It says, Therefore, therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest. Did you see that? There is still a promise remaining. There is still a promise remaining. There is still a promise remaining. What promise? A promise of entering his rest. Let me tell you something. The children of Israel entered the physical land, but they did not enter the rest of God. Hey, today, today, we don't need to go to the land of Israel to enter into the rest. See that now? Anywhere you find yourself, you can actually enter into the rest of the land that God had planned for them. Where, right where you are in your house, you can enter the rest of that land. <laughs> so it says, Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear, lest any of you seem to have come short of it. How many people have been coming short of this rest, entering the rest? How many believers have asked that question, can God furnish a table in the wilderness? How many believers have asked that question, can God pay my rent? Can God get me a new car? Can God pay my children's school fees? Can God take care of that mortgage loan? Can God take care of, what is it? How many times you have asked yourself that question? There is a promise of entering into his rest. And that promise is still remaining because many have not entered in. But see, because it was a promise from God, he says, my word shall not return to me void. Meaning if that word has not been fulfilled, that word is hanging. It is hanging. Why is that word hanging? Looking for who would believe. He's looking for who would believe. Looking for who will believe. If you are the one that's going to believe today, then let it be that you are the one God has chosen to bless today. Hallelujah. Because you've got to believe. And your mind's got to walk in the pattern that God is directing. Understand the training that God is giving to you. Look at the things that God has been doing in your life. He's done it once. He's done it twice. I've said this many times. Anything you see that God has done in your life repeatedly, at least twice, you should begin to have a mindset of walking in that pattern with God. Because sometimes, you know, we, we, we live in so much doubt. God is helping you. God is supplying your needs. Guess what you're thinking? It's good though. But I see, it is better if I have my own job so that I can supply my needs myself. That's what people think. Now, you know what you're doing? God is showing you the rest, but you are choosing rather to live like in Egypt. What do you mean? Can, you mean I should just be there and God, you don't understand? You don't understand? God expects every one of us to live like Jesus. <laughs> I know you've been taught wrong. But see, sometimes it's important you sit down with scriptures and ask the Holy Spirit to help you, give you the mindset of the scriptures. Did you hear that? Ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, give me the mindset of the scriptures. Because sometimes people argue scriptures with the worldly mindset. People have been trained in this world to think like the world. And now they want to interpret scriptures according to the world. So they are the ones that will tell you, look, 
God doesn't throw manna from heaven. Have you heard Christians talk like that? But God did throw manna from heaven. <laughs> Praise God. He said that was dead. He doesn't do it today. Who told you he doesn't do it today? May God help you. Our time is up. Praise God. I, I pray, I pray, I pray that you begin to experience the power and the glory of God in your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.